Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is the face milling operation. So face milling operation refers to the milling of the top face of your part. It doesn't necessarily mean using a face mill or a shell mill. It just literally refers to just the top face of your part. And we look at the top face as a open pocket. So a lot of the functionality here will be similar to what you see in the pocket operation. I'll refer you to that pocket operation video for the full details of pocket. But here we're going to cover the face milling. So to get to the face milling operation, you can either go to your SolidCam operations tab. Under 2.5D, you'll see there's the face operation there. Under the SolidCam 2.5D, you see the face operation there. Or you can always right-click on Setup, Add Milling Operation, and go to Face. So you've got the different ways to get to that. Now the face milling operation as I said, is a, a style of the pocketing operation. So a lot of the functionality will be the same and really just focuses on doing the top face of the part. And I mentioned in the uh, starting a brand new milling cam part file video that you don't necessarily have to add the stock and the target. So if you don't, you can actually use this option here. But if you have added the stock and the target, then you have this ability here to read the stock or the geometry off that. So I'm going to go through both these functions here. So let's assume you don't have the stock and the target defined. You can define the geometry for a face mill just by clicking on this icon here and then clicking on New Geometry. And in this menu, you actually have the ability to choose the three types of geometries that you might encounter when you're programming inside SolidCAM. Solids or models, faces or surfaces, and then just profiles or, or contours. So let's start with a model. If I do a model definition, I can click on Define. And I'll click on the solid. I can click on any face on the solid because what I'm really doing here is I'm just looking at it from the z-axis point of view, the tool axis point of view. I'm getting this box shape around my part. So it just literally just gives me the coincident or tangent faces on the outside and gives me that box shape. I can click the silhouette. And I can get the outside profile of the face milling operation as well. So if I'm looking to just define it by the solid, I have the ability to do that here. Let's say, for instance, I'm not doing the entire stock, the entire target, or the entire solid, whatever I'm looking at. I just want to do specific faces. Let's say this island in the middle here was actually taller than the rest of it. It is a boss in the middle, and I just want to face mill just that boss. Well, that's still part of that same solid, so I can't just click on just that, that boss. I need to use faces, and then I'll go to define. And then you'll see the face or surface selection window here, very similar to what we'll see in the HSS videos, where we choose surfaces as our drive geometry. And I'm just going to click on the face that I'd like to machine. In this case, just this guy right here. Click the green check mark. And again, we get a similar functionality. You can see that it's grabbing the edges of that face, or I can just put a box around the whole thing. So it's driven by the faces. Now, if I had a actual contour I wanted to follow, let's say I'm not looking to, to select the face, I'm looking to do an entire area that I can just select contours, very similar to what I've done inside pocketing. I can just go to Profile, click on Define, and I'll click on the exact profile of what I'm looking to, to face. In this case, I'm just going to make it really simple. Let's just grab the outside of the part once again. So I actually grab a contour. The functionality of this window here, the contour selection window, is again going to be covered in the profile and the pocketing operations. So we can take a look at those for more. Click on the green check mark. And then we get the outside profile of my part. And it follows that exact contour right there. So in whichever version of the, of the geometry that you have, you have the ability to face uh, that, that, that definition. But I'm not going to use that today. I'm actually going to use the stock definition one, because I have defined a stock. If we take a look at it here, you can see that that is the box definition of the stock that I used. And it is a little more outside the material there. So by using this definition here, I don't actually have to choose the geometry. And what this does is also looking at the updated stock. So if I have already, let's say, milled out that center pocket, or if I've done the outside profile, it won't even bother trying to face those pieces of material because it notices that they've already been removed from the updated stock. So very powerful in terms of the recognition. In terms of tools, I mentioned in the beginning that we don't actually have to use face mills or shell mills. So you can see here that as soon as I go to add a tool, it tells me which type of tools it'll accept for the face milling operation. 
So if I were doing facing with an end mill, I could do that. I could do, I could use a shell mill if I wanted to. I could use a bull end mill or I can do a taper mill if I like to. In this case, I'm just gonna use the two inch shell mill that comes with, uh, with the software. To create milling tool components or milling tool assemblies, I'll refer you back to the uh, creating milling tools video in this introductory series. Let me just select that tool. Fees and speeds are controlled under the data tab found here. In terms of levels, the face milling operation will default to by top of stock, and then for the face depth, by top of target, which would make sense for a face milling operation. We're looking to take it from the top of the stock down to the top of the target. But in the case of your part, maybe you want to do something different, you can always get it to start from the top of the target. And what that'll let you to do is if you don't actually have the stock defined, you can say top of target and then add a delta in the positive that would add material on the top. Or if for whatever reason you're trying to face mill into the part, you can do top of stock and you can go or top of target and then go into the part. Or you can always do user defined. It actually will default to user defined if you click on the model yourself. You can still get that associativity, but it, it'll automatically default to user defined. But this being face milling, I'm probably gonna start from the top of the stock anyway. And then by top of target also has a user defined option as well. So if I wasn't looking to go right to the top of the target or for whatever reason, maybe there's something else in here I wanted to face down to, I have that ability to select that there. If there's more than uh, more material on the top that you need to rough out, then you can actually give it a step down. And this step down will travel across that amount of material. So if that step down doesn't equally divide the full depth equal, uh, properly, you get uh, maybe the first couple of passes are the 25 thou we have here, and then the last pass is, uh, is like a five thou, maybe a waste of a pass. You can actually equalize, pressure on the tool, equalize the movement, and just use equal step down. And what that'll do is convert that to a maximum step down. So it'll recalculate the step down so that it's a proper um, set of passes so that it equalizes the pressure on the tool. In terms of technology, you're gonna see the main parameters of this tool path. And in this case, for face milling, we're actually just telling it to move in a certain direction using these values here. We're telling it our overlap. So overlap is the inverse of a step over. Basically what we're doing is we're telling it how much we'd like to overlap with the previous pass. So as this guy goes across the part and takes its next pass, I'm getting it to overlap with the previous pass by 30%. So that's actually a step over of 70% of the tool diameter or I could always just plug in a value if I like. Depth cutting type, as it progresses across the part, I can tell it to either move across the part, reposition, and then do the next pass, stepping down in the same position, or I can do zigzag, where it'll just step down wherever it is, and then continue the zigzag in the other direction. If the generated toolpath is in a trajectory or a path that I don't like, I want it to reverse it, I can always click on reverse, and it changes it. If I have multiple islands and I'm trying to face all of them in one toolpath, rather than do each individual island and then jump to another one, if I want to do them in just one sweeping pass across the part, I can click on complete the level and that'll just con connect all the passes in one smooth pass. I mentioned before that if there was some roughing passes with some step downs, uh, here we can control the finishing. So I can leave some floor offset here that would leave 10 thou on the top of the target and then I can just tell it to do a finishing pass to eliminate that last bit. Or if I'm just doing one full step, I can just leave that at zero. So those are the generic parameters for the face milling tool path. But the actual travel of the tool, the trajectory of the tool across the part is controlled by that second tab. And that second tab is called out here. So right now we have it set to hatch. And the hatch parameters are just how we're gonna zigzag across that part. Z hatch is a zigzag across the part, and we're just telling it which direction we'd like to go. In this case, user defined angle of zero is in the X positive direction. If I just bring this guy over, zero degrees from the X positive means we're gonna travel in this direction. If I put 90 degrees in here, we're gonna be traveling perpendicular to that in the Y direction. Um, so basically you just tell it what angle you like to go at. But if the part is askew or in a regular shape and you're not sure what angle to plug in there, you can always just click on optimal angle. Automatic optimal angle will determine the longest passes across the part. It will give you the best travel across the part using the zigzag. Cutting direction, basically, we can tell it to do a zigzag cut. So it'll just go back and forth. 
or one way. It'll go sweep across the part, reposition back to the same side of the part, reposition back to the same side of the part. So this has the most travel, probably increases your cycle time, but if you're looking for a nice finish, this is probably the best way to go. Whereas zigzag, it'll just rough out the part. Just zigzag and zigzag back. The start point. If I generate the toolpath, we can see that the direction I told it to go, that is the start point. If you look at this as a square, that is that start point there, represented there. If I actually wanted it to start maybe over here, I'll just check this box right here, save and calculate, and it starts over there. If it should have started, let's say, over there, check that box, and it moves the start point to over there. So you have control over the start point of this. It's still doing a zigzag, but because it's doing a zigzag, it's doing that hatch pattern, there's definitely going to be four corners. So you just tell it which of those four corners you like it to do. You'll notice that the toolpath is actually going past the part in that uh, tangential direction or in the along direction. And that's this right here. That's the 10% of the tool diameter. It continues across there. In terms of the across direction, the perpendicular direction, I have it set to zero, mainly because this uh, this line represents the tool path, and from there, the radius of the tool is probably larger than that little bit of material. So I'm actually machining the entire material there. Uh, but if I wanted to travel a little further out in all those directions, I have the control there to do an extension. At the end point of each pass, you can see that it's just doing that 90 degree turn. If that's a little rough on your particular machine, you can always add a fillet. And then you tell it what fillet you'd like to use there. So you can see it actually adds a fillet arc there to smooth out the movement of the tool. And then if you want it to roll in, you can always just do a roll in. Like that. Let's take a look at the other options. So next option is contour. So with contour, it's much more of that classic pocketing racetrack style of toolpath. So really all we're doing here is we're telling it that we'd like to start from the outside going in and it just works its way inwards doing a lateral step over. So in the case of contour, we're following the actual outside perimeter of the part. In this case, we're doing a square part. So we're actually gonna get some 90 degree turns. If we don't actually wanna have that 90 degree turn within the toolpath, we can add a corner. So I can add a fillet. You can see that it adds a little bit of a fillet there and you control those fillets. I can add a loop where it actually will loop around and then continue the tool path or I can get it just kind of jut out, jut back in using the sharp. And the loop and the sharp are really just to eliminate any kind of cusps that occur at that 90 degree turn within a pocket. Again, we have cutting direction controls. So with this particular tool, we're doing a contour style we're, we're doing the lateral step over, so we have to have a direction. So we can do climb or conventional cut. And because of that lateral step over, we can tell it how we'd like it to step over. Linear, as you see there, is just a nice linear move, or smooth, just kind of does a little bit of an arc. And then the same extension controls are up here in the contour style, but since we're moving in all different directions, we don't really have an along or across direction. So we just tell it an extension on all sides. The last couple of ones are even simpler. One pass is the idea that if we are using a shell mill, it might be of a, such a diameter that it can just do the pass, one pass across the part. So in this case, we still get the controls of the angle. So either user defined angle or optimal angle. It'll find the longest pass across the part. And we have extensions, but really just in the one direction. We are only traveling in one direction, we only have the one direction. Um, now the one pass will find the mathematical center of your part. So in this case, it'll find it right dead center of that rectangular part. But if you have an irregular shape, it will figure out the dead center of the part to get that one pass. And lastly, if we do spiral, it really just does a spiraling from the outside going in using that tool. And again, you have the roll-in option if you like. Under link, you have the ability to add a lead-in, lead-out, very similar to what we've seen in the pocketing and the profile operation. But in this case, we're already adding an extension anyway, so we are already off the part. But if you wanted to control the entry into the part, you have the ability here with the lead in and the lead out. So very simple toolpath, really just for machining the top of the part. 
based off the stock or based off your own user-defined uh, geometry. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.